Hi biology students, this is Mr. Yago here making his first ever appearance in your biology class videos. Today we're going to go through animal growth section 10.3 from one cell to many, making the organism. We're going to focus mainly on after fertilization. To this point we have discussed processes like mitosis, which is cell division, meiosis, which is the production of sexual cells like sperm and egg, and notice that we are focusing today on a zygote. A zygote essentially is a diploid cell based off of the sperm and egg and the genetic material that it brought to the egg. Uh, we're also, also going to look at growth and division, cell numbers, differentiation, and morphogenesis. And as you can see, cell numbers grow exponentially. That's a math term. And if you take a look here, you can see that we start with 1, move to 2, 4, 8, 16, so on and so forth, to a really, really large number that I don't care to find out for you right now. But if you have some free time, feel free and come up with that. Differentiation is uh, another thing we're going to look at too, how we differentiate our cells into skin cells, nerve cells, muscle cells, blood cells, and gut cells. Essentially what that means is we are extremely complex beings. And as we go through this process of morphogenesis, we create more and more cells and we differentiate those cells so that we get our certain structures in our body. And every structure that we have in our body has a specific function. That's why they need to be different. So let's talk about cleavage. During this period of development, cleavage, the cells usually divide simultaneously, doubling in number with each cycle. So as you can see here in this picture, we are constantly doubling cells until we get to a number probably pretty close than that. All right, now let's discuss this process of cleavage as we divide simultaneously into multiple cells. So as I discussed before, after sperm fuses with egg through fertilization, we produce a zygote, which is a diploid cell that has the full chromosome set. Zygote undergoes cleavage, which produces a mass of cells called a marula. So a zygote is essentially one cell, and as it divides, our next mass of cells, we call that a marula. From there, the cells continue to divide simultaneously and create a blastula. Cells move from the surface to the interior, eventually producing a gastrula. So up to this point, we're basically putting definitions to the different masses of cells. So we start with zygote, which is one. We move to a marula, then a blastula, then a gastrula. Gastrula will then give rise to germ layers, which we're going to discuss in a much more greater detail. Germ layers produce various cell types, as I mentioned before. Differentiation is vitally important, especially in humans, to get our different types of cells in the body. And the shape of the blastula depends on the structure of the original egg and how its yolk is arranged. So we're going to take a look at that next. Now that we've discussed a few of these various masses of cells, I want you to take an opportunity to kind of chronologically put these in order. Although it says in your table group, if you're by yourself, I would highly recommend jotting these terms down quickly um, and putting a number to them. All right, so if you take a look at the numbers that I put up here, you should have nine. And starting with number one, sperm fuses with ovum. Remember, ovum essentially means egg. From there, we go to fertilization. We have created number three, a zygote. From there, we go through the process of cleavage, number four, which is simultaneously dividing the cells. We then make a marula, which is number five. From there, we make a blastula, which is number six. Then a gastrula, which is number seven. Then we start dividing up into our germ layers, which is number eight. And these germ layers are going to produce various cell types in the human body. So hopefully you took an opportunity to go through this and you know, understand the chronological order of these events. In this video then we'll look at the beginning of development, looking into the ovary at an unfertilized egg. It then gets fertilized by sperm, which travel down the fallopian tube. So here, millions of sperm coming along. Several of them will hit the egg and try to penetrate it, but one will win, as it were, go into the nucleus, 
and then there's a reprogramming process where the male and female nuclei have their genes uh, set aside to be turned on and off for early development. Here you see early cleavage stages occurring, and this is one of the early growth phases. As the embryo moves down the fallopian tube, it's going to form an important stage called the blastocyst here in a few seconds. Of course, in real life that takes days, about five days. At this stage, then, I'd like to draw your attention to the inside of the blastocyst, where there are cells called the inner cell mass which I'll be abbreviating as ICM. Those are the cells that make the entire animal. And the outer cells give rise to the placenta and other supporting tissues. At this stage, the embryo implants into the wall of the uterus. This is when a pregnancy is really initiated. And now we'll see those blue inner cell mass cells form a disc. And then as the cells continue to grow, they change their physical positions, their kind of geographical relationship to one another. And you'll see that represented here as this disc gets transformed into an embryo. Those lines represent sites where cells are migrating in and out. And here's an important stage when the three beginning layers of the embryo, the so-called germ layers, are formed. And I'll come back to that in a few minutes. As development proceeds, there's more growth and movement of cells It'll begin to form a neural tube. Here it turns, and appendages start to bud out. You see the head forming in the eye. And then eventually we get a small embryo. And some months later, of course, this would be born as a young baby. All right, so what that video really talked about is the beginning stages of these divisions of cells. Uh, as you can see here, we have an overview of early development. We have a sea star, we have a frog, we have a chick, and we have a mouse. And as you can see, there are some differences here. As the cell starts to go through this exponential growth, where we have division of cells and cells, and we have two to four to eight, we develop our marula, our blastula, and our gastrula. And as you noticed in that movie, they also call the blastula blastocyte. Essentially means the same thing. But there are some definite differences, especially noticeable in the chick versus the frog, the sea star, and the mouse. And that deals a lot with the dense yolk around the area of the egg. So there are some differences between invertebrates and vertebrates, and so on and so forth. All right, as you can see in this slide, we're just going to discuss a little bit about differentiation and morphogenesis, two words that I brought up on the very first slide. Differentiation, meaning different types of cells, and morphogenesis, the process of this division of cells, starting from one to however many you have right now. Uh, differentiation and morphogenesis genesis, excuse me, first become obvious as some cells move from the surface to the interior of the blastula. The embryo will now become a three-layered gastrula. And these three cell layers, called the primary germ layers, will form all of the body's various tissues. As you can see in this picture right here, we are looking at the primary germ layers. On top here in blue, we have the ectoderm. And if we break that down, ecto actually means outside. In the middle, we have the mesoderm in red. And meso means middle, so that'll be very helpful in understanding that. Uh, in the ectoderm, we create things like the nervous tissue. Nervous tissue would be parts of the brain, parts of the spinal cord, and also various nerves that run through our body. The mesoderm will contain the cells that will start developing the muscle, as well as the connective tissues. Connective tissues, we have, we have a variety of those. We have things like fat, which we call adipose tissue, uh, tendons and ligaments, which we call dense connective tissue. Even blood and bone is also considered connective tissue. Now, on the very inside in yellow, as you can see here, we have the endoderm. Okay, Endoderm means inside, which makes a lot more sense if the ecto is on the outside. So if you take a look, this is a 16-day-old embryo. And we have the ectoderm on the outside, the mesoderm in the middle, and the endoderm inside. All right, take a look in the top right. That is a gastrula. We have a variety of cells in there. And as you can see, these cells are actually already being differentiated. You can tell by their shape. We have the endoderm, 
the mesoderm, and the ectoderm, which we just mentioned on the last slide. These three cell layers are called the primary germ layers, and these will form all of the body's tissues. So let's start with the ectoderm. Remember, ecto means outside, so this is the outer layer. It will form the skin, it'll form the nervous system, and other related structures with that. As we move further into the cell, or the gastrula on the top right, we enter the mesoderm. Meso means middle, so this is the middle layer of the gastrula. These germ cells in the mesoderm will actually produce the skeleton, which is bone, muscle, heart, which is also a muscle, blood, and many other internal organs. Finally, we have the endoderm. Endo means inside, so that's the inner layer of the gastrula. And this will usually develop a tube that will become the lining of the digestive system. If you think about that right now, when you ingest food, it goes into your mouth, down your esophagus, into your stomach, into your small intestine, large intestine, and obviously out through the body. So this tube is very important in terms of how we take in our nutrients, absorb them, and then excrete our wastes. So these are the primary germ layers, ecto, outer, meso, middle, endo inner layer and each of these germ layers will produce a variety and differentiation of cells in the body all right time for a quick quiz we got a gastrula up here in the top right ectoderm is one mesoderm is two endoderm is three based off of what you just dropped or jotted down in your past notes see if you could sort the following into the germ layer of their origin so for instance, where would blood be located? Is it in the ectoderm, mesoderm, or endoderm? So take a second, see if you can go through each of these. All right, from what I can see here, you got them all right. Starting with the ectoderm, number one, we have the skin and the nervous system. From there, number two, the mesoderm in the middle, we have blood, we have heart, we have the skeleton, we have the muscles. And then finally, the endoderm, which is the furthest inside layer, we have the liver, digestive system, and pancreas. All right, let's take an opportunity to discuss a little bit more on morphogenesis. The development of a blastula into a gastrula is called gastrulation, and it involves some pretty major changes. So again, if you don't understand what blastula and glastula, gastrula means, you might want to take a second to look back in your notes. All right, so major changes of morphogenesis. Coordinated movements of individual cells and tissues. You might have saw this in that little video clip. So coordinated movements mean that skin cells are going to move out onto the ecto, cells that will start, in, start to turn into the blood and the heart and things like that will be in the middle, and so on and so forth. These cells are going to begin changing shapes. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, every cell in your body has a specific structure. And it looks the way it looks because it also has a specific function. So these cell shapes will fold and split in the various cell layers. Formation of tissue mashes by local cell division. So if we look at how a cell starts to create into a tissue, tissues are groups of cells. And then tissues will form their way into organs, organs into organ systems, and obviously that makes up your complex body. Finally, what I want you to jot, jot down is even shaping of organs by genetically timed death of some cells. Whew. Essentially what that means is apoptosis. All right, Some cells will die. It just happens, especially your skin cells. On average, your skin cells will last about a month and then be replenished. So some cells will die and these organs will actually shape themselves into what your lungs look like or your heart looks like or your liver. Because in human beings, if you are healthy and normal, they should all look the same. Maybe some of you are wondering how this cell division is going to keep itself together. We're making all these cells, wouldn't they just break apart and go off on their own. Well, there are certain proteins in the body that are actually going to hold these cells together. And during morphogenesis, we have controlled breaking and remaking of chemical bonds between each of these cells, essentially allowing all the heart cells to stay together and form the heart, all the liver cells to stay together and form the liver, and obviously all the skin cells to move out of the ectoderm and cover your whole entire body. So these bonds are constantly being broken and also being remade in order to keep these neighboring cells together. 
So, invertebrates, the general shape or body plan of the organism appears during this process of gastrulation. So, if you don't remember what gastrulation is again, take a second, look back in your notes at the gastrula. So, we are considered vertebrates, we have a backbone, and the first mesoderm, which remember is that middle layer of our primary germ layers, will become something called the notochord, which is a stiff rod that develops into part of the backbone. A lot of our body will be based off of this backbone. Now, notochord development establishes a few things. It establishes our anterior and posterior axes, which are considered the front and back of our body. Now, if you take a look at that picture of the horse, it's pretty obvious that the anterior is the front, posterior is the back. But we are a little bit different. We walk on two legs. We are bipedal. So that anterior and posterior will look slightly different. It will also develop something called the dorsal and ventral axes, from the back to the belly. And again, just like humans, we might have a little bit of difference there. So, during this process, a large head, a segmented backbone, and limbs complete the vertebrate body plan. This will all happen in the process of gastrulation. Alright, in this image right here we can see the notochord, which we just discussed, uh, up there in picture A. And notice that it is in the mesoderm, which is the middle layer, the ectoderm is above it. And as we go through this process of gastrulation, and we are continuing to develop, you notice that we start to develop a neural fold, and this fold will actually turn into a neural tube. And that neural fold did occur out of the ectoderm. Okay, so in this picture of the notochord, the dorsal ectoderm, which you notice dorsal again means top, so very similar to the dorsal fin on a fish or a whatever else that has fins, uh, this tube will form the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. So the tissue interactions that produce the neural tube, which we just saw, establish the foundation on which later stages of development are based. And as you can see here, we have a picture which is in your diagrams, and we have the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm, which is our three germ layers. And we also have the notochord, which we just discussed. So if you take a look, the ectoderm, which creates the neural tube will form the brain and the spinal cord, which is actually going to be above or dorsal to the notochord, which again is a stiff rod that develops into the backbone, which we know are our, our vertebrae. And then we have the epidermal ectoderm, and epi, just like ecto, kind of means on top or outside. That's going to form our skin, our hair, our nails, also tooth enamel. So if you start to think about this, these tissues that are developed in these various germ layers make sense. The ectoderm produces our skin. Our skin is on the outside of our body. Now the mesoderm, as we mentioned before, muscles, bones, tissue, circulatory system, to name a few, will be formed. And then we have the endoderm, which they call the gut, but is essentially the lining of the digestive system and bladder. In the bottom right, we do call this a neurula as it starts to develop these notochord and the nervous system as well. So take an opportunity to make sure you have this filled in in your diagrams. It's an important one. Probably be on your test. Now, there is some variation in this development. Some animals, such as birds and mammals, develop directly into young that are like the adult. Now, that's a little bit different for us. As we go through our process of development and our cells differentiate and divide, we actually start out in various phases. For example, a baby looks a lot different than an adult human being. So there are some differences between various types of animals in our world, and I just want you to have an understanding that sometimes they move directly into young, and sometimes they have to develop further into a maturation state. Here are some examples of those differences. Frogs, sea stars, and insects first form a larva. And this is a feeding individual that looks nothing like the adult. Larva goes through something called metamorphosis, which I'm sure you learned about when you were little. And that's a series of changes that transforms the larva into an adult. As you can see in this image here, we start out with eggs. Eggs turn into a tadpole, then into a metamorph, and then into a frog. On the other picture to the left, we have an egg, which turns into a larva, looks like a little caterpillar, and that will start to form a chrysalis, or a pupa, and that will eventually turn into an adult, which is a butterfly. So this is an example of metamorphosis. 
Now there's two types of development that I want you to learn about here. First one is direct development. Organisms appear as miniature adults. So you saw the picture of a horse or an elephant. That is an example of direct development. They look exactly as an adult would look. The next one on the list is indirect development. And that's where we can actually have a feeding individual that looks nothing like the adult. And we call this stage the larva stage. And you might want to write that down. I can see right now that I kind of goofed up and did not click on that background um, right there. But we, an organism will first appear as a larva. So you're going to want to write larva down. That's a feeding individual that looks nothing like the adult. And that's spelled L-A-R-V-A. -A. Now from there... That larva later goes through the process of metamorphosis, which I gave an example of on the prior slide. And that's a series of changes that will transform the larva into an adult. And the examples we had are frogs, seesaws, and insects. Now, as a little bit of a review, I have a flow chart here. Highly recommend writing this down. Maybe you can do it without me going through this. But as you can see, we started out with our sperm and our ovum. And I'm going to chronologically go through this process of development. Now, sperm and ovum are both haploid cells. And upon fertilization, create a zygote. Now, this zygote is going to go through a process of cleavage, which is simultaneous division of cells. After a zygote, you get marula. From there, we go into a stula. Next up is a which we discussed as being something that starts to develop those differentiated cells in the body. From there we go to the where we developed the notochord. And then finally we get an embryo. And that is our final stage of making an organism that we're going to talk about today. To kind of sum things up, what I want you to do is take an opportunity in your notes and briefly describe in your own words, how we go from two sex cells to a complex multicellular organism, like that beauty right there. Boom. So, words you should use, blastula, gastrula, zygote, and you should also describe those germ layers that we discussed in gastrulation. So, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. And what's important about those layers is they start to develop our differentiated cells. So, if you can correctly jot down a nice little paragraph, three to five sentences, using all those terms, you should be good to go with this section and have a really good understanding of how we go through this process of morphogenesis. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you guys have a great day and look forward to 10.5. I'll be doing that one as well. Peace.